This is called Roots. Young girl with roots of olive trees, met a man of ebony, laying together, me. Their story not new, sable men have planted their seed on the roots of olive trees, centuries before these two. Moors with mighty swords, landed ships, conquered lords, after gold, loved local women, sired children, bronze, tan, cinnamon, empire defeated, warriors retreated across oceans to their motherland, but on faces among the races, traces, they kissed the Mediterranean. Features of old lands mark my face, their histories, their struggles, the blood in my veins. I am proud, refuse to choose. Thank you. This one is called Understanding. Every bruise, fat lip, you didn't mean, I understood. It was just the wrong time to be me. Taking my dreams, making them jokes until I cried from the ridicule, stopped dreaming. I understood before the tears dried. How dare I dream? You couldn't. I followed you around. We took the bus downtown, being company to get away from your aggravation, the strain. Your feet dangling under the seat. Sometimes you'd walk, even smile. Your solid grip would slacken every mile we got from home. Shopping for what we couldn't buy, you'd sigh with a faraway look in your eyes. Then we'd share fries, coffee, laughed a bit. I was your best friend. I understood when you threw that punch, then said, look what you made me do. Your face like you lost your only friend. You didn't, I always forgave. You scrubbed floors for others, worked sometimes all seven days, never complained, even took pride in your sacrifice because it was how we all ate. Without being asked, I understood it was time to get a job to give you money you wouldn't take for bills that were always late. I understood when the punches came, your burden was great, your bones ached, you needed rest and I was laughing playing games. I hid the bruises as best I could, answered no questions about my face. They wouldn't understand my fate and what I was doing for you and why I always forgave. Thank you. Oh. This one is called Just a Name. It didn't matter to me from where I came, who the man was, that was just a name. I was better off not knowing, and you were to blame. A constant reminder of my mother's shame. You were a secret to be kept. I was only compared to you as a means to inflict pain. There are no pictures, but I think I have your face. My memories of you are few but happy. I never tell anyone about how you peeled an orange, your hugs, kisses, a red satin jacket, speaking Spanish and your love. They are my secret, all I have of you. When it was too late for you to participate, I met a sister, a brother, nieces and nephews. Sadly, you were a secret to them too, just a name. But there is no denying what we have been told. Our face is the same. We all think it's yours. We are piecing you together, creating a person, a father, a family, from conversation overheard, and a few old documents, trying not to be angry at what was done for the best of us. You died alone in the hospital where we were all born just a few floors away. Did you think of us, Papa, before you went to your grave? How do we honor the man from where we, from where we all came when all we were given was just a name? Thank you. Ooh. Now I'm gonna tell you a little about love. Oh, um, this one is called Inspiration. She liked him before she knew she was attracted to him. His humor, politics, and general warmth kept her coming back for more conversation, even hugs. She was so, un she was so comfortable in his company that unbeknownst to her, 
she listened more than she spoke. He complimented her smile, picked out her dimples, picked out the dimples on her cheeks when she did, then kissed her. She didn't remember the last time a man leaned in and kissed the words from her mouth. For the first time, a kiss calmed her heart as it stoked her desire. She kissed him again, to be sure, and smiled at the revelation. She found herself only speaking enough to spark a story so she could hear the sound of his voice, which seemed to speak in a tone especially for her hearing. It acted as a panacea to her bruised and battered heart. She wanted to curl up in his warm arms, lay on his invitingly comfortable shoulder while he whispered stories in her ear with fingers in her hair. Why is this person, whom she'd known so briefly, make her feel safe and completely at ease, being exactly who she was, even seem to take joy in all she is with a smile, affection, and indulgent laughter. It caused her to pick up her pen again after some time away to explore. Her attraction, which was like a slow pulse that stimulated her mind and body simultaneously, was exhilarating and confusing. She wanted to give him the contents of her mind as ardently as her body. She wanted to run away. She wanted to dive in. Instead, she wrote. Thank you. This one is called Moving On. I want to turn off my mind so I don't think of you and a life that could be. I want a different heart since you are wrapped in every beat and vein of this one. I want new lips to wipe away the taste of all of your kisses. I want new skin to remove your touch tattooed across every inch. Take my ears so I don't hear those songs that remind me of you. Render me mute so I don't say your name or how much I miss you. Take my sight so I don't see you live your life with someone else. I want to move on, but my love keeps me planted. Thank you. This one is called The Healer's Tale. She'd find them scarred and cynical from their wars with love, never knowing she was falling for the men they used to be, or sometimes who they'd become. She'd take them home, listen to their war stories, pretending as if she'd never been in combat and tasted blood herself. She made no demands, stroked them tenderly, gave them space, her body and her heart. Thinking that if she wrote out their storms, salved their wounds, whispered manhood in their ears, they would stay and love her the way they did when they were fresh-faced boys, eager to participate and die in love's strife. So eager she was for her reward, she never saw that their scars were irreparable and deep, that their battled, battles raged on with the ghosts of their previous fight, leaving no room for her cures or her love. So she'd move on to the next, ignoring her own wounds, allowing them to fester. Believing she'd get it right this time, she'd proceed with her treatments undaunted. The healer realized she needed time to mend when she was covering the gray in her hair, loving everyone's children but her own, and, the tear and tears started to become the shine behind her smile. She finally retired. Weary from her crusade, she removed her healer's cap unzipped empathy and hung it in the closet next to passion. Trust, she folded it up, she folded up, placed it on the high shelf, and shut the door. She took her bruised and generous heart, scarred from being dropped and neglected on the battlefield, put it away in a gilded oh. <laughs> dang it. A gilded sticky page. Yes. <laughs> in a gilded box wrapped in a fine gold chain and locked it. Then the healer applied her own salve, covered up her other injuries as best she could, then lipped forward into the unknown a little wiser. Now I'm gonna talk about a little bit of observation, politics, and poverty. This one is called Suds. To kiss his cold lips that just yesterday 
felt so warm on hers. He loved her. Does he still love her wherever he is now? She scrubs his blood from the sidewalk, mixing memories with warm, sudsy water. Bang! Bang! Sorry, ma'am. We did everything we could. Smiles, lingering looks, cheap circlets of gold. Can she recall love with so little? Today she'll scrub. Tomorrow they'll walk over what's left of him. Children will try to find blood in the sidewalk. A game. She wasn't the first to scrub her life from the sidewalk. She won't be the last. Wow. Thank you. Right. We've all seen this guy. It's called No Name. I was a child once. Dreams floated on wings of butterflies. I had a name. Now, I make my living from your pity. Ignore your disdain. I care for what you spare, not opinions of my fate. Beyond hope, I sleep in a heap with all I own, on a train, in the street, any place free. This cup rattles in your ear. My stench reaches for you, clears coins from your purse. Not to acknowledge the man, you give me what's earned. <laughs> My blisters aren't from exposure. I don't shiver because it's cold. I kiss the glass lady. She burns my mouth. I've sold my soul. Don't judge. For when I lay with her, the smells evaporate. My rags become gossamer sails. I drift among clouds, leave colorful trails. I'm young again. Have a name. Wow. Thank you. This is the culmination of all of my political discourse on Facebook. <laughs> it's called I Am the System. I am the I am the whelp of the undeserving. My mother an addict, even teenage. My father black. So of course just a name. I had no choice in how I was made. I lived only because there was no Roe versus Wade. I am the system. An inmate of foster care, aid to families with dependent children was how we ate. We went to the doctor because of Medicaid. We waited in line for the butter, the cheese, took food from church pantries accepted their charity with the appropriate amount of shame. That free food tasted great, knowing others missed their meals to be sure I ate, trying to smile past their hunger, making it a game to not feel ashamed. I carry the disgrace of poverty as easily as the blood in my veins. I've worked two jobs, even three, vowed never to take. But oligarchs made mistakes, took from us the means to create, which for them was easy to make. So unemployment insurance, I did take. I am the whelp of the undeserving. I took, I ate, I grew and survived whatever they threw my way. I stand before you, valiantly forged, American made. I am the system. Thank you. Oh, whoa. Woo.